Hello, hello, what is up? I'm excited to have this conversation with you today because this is extremely top of mind for me. Um, we're talking about six ways I support my energy without caffeine. Um, and one of those ways is not sleep. Okay, this is why it's top of mind for me right now. If you are new around here or you haven't heard, um, I had a baby on June 12th. So I'm currently about nine weeks postpartum. I have a two month old, um, Madison, who she is with me right now in my wrap. So if you hear anything, that's who it is. And if you're watching this on YouTube, it looks like from your angle that she can't breathe. She doesn't have like any space to actually breathe. I promise you she does. Her nose is completely clear. Uh, so if it looks like that, I promise you she could breathe well. Um, so anyway, I'm exclusively breastfeeding. So this just means that sleep has been like non-existent since I had her um, because, you know, she feeds multiple times in the middle of the night. Her days and nights are mixed up. So like I haven't gotten longer than a two hour stretch maybe two hours straight of sleep since before I had her. Also, sleep is so different when you become a mom. It's like so much lighter. Literally, she breathes hard and I'm awake and I'm like, what's going on? Like, It's so deep sleep is just not happening. Um, And honestly, it's fine. Like that's the season that we're in right now. I love it. I love supporting her whenever she needs it. Obviously, it's hard sometimes. I'm not going to lie, especially when you're like, you just, your head just hits the pillow and then like they're up again. You're like, fuck, I can't, I just want to go to sleep or at night. Like that's when I feel like my energy is really honestly great during the day, despite this, which is why I'm recording this episode for you. So I can help support you. But at night, probably like five 36 around that time, that's when I start like slowly crashing and being like, okay, I'm like exhausted. And it's such a mental game of feeling so tired and knowing that you're not going to be able to sleep, like it's, it's messed up. It really is, but it really is just a game of, okay, I know this isn't forever. This is just for right now. Like it's, I'm, I know in a couple months and a couple years, I'm going to wish to go back to the season where I could just support her in the middle of the night. Like she needs me. Like it's all of that stuff. Like I really just remind myself of how much I will want to eventually go back to this stage and just be with my baby. So it's, it really is like, this is not me complaining that I'm not getting any sleep. I'm just giving you context of it um, because I want you to actually see like how little sleep there is going on, but how much my energy really is stable throughout the day without caffeine, because that is what we're talking about. Six ways you could support your energy without caffeine because caffeine is not the answer. I've been someone who has not had caffeine since I think it was about 2014 is when I gave up coffee. I never was a pre-workout person or anything like that. I was a coffee girl. I would have coffee every day. At the time, I had like vanilla creamer in it and stuff. I had a huge mug in the morning. I had one after teaching because I was teaching at the time. I used to be a teacher. If you didn't know that, I was a teacher for nine years. Um, I taught Spanish. I taught ENL. That's also why my courses and stuff are so on freaking point and people get such awesome results because not only it's not just about learning information, it's about how someone presents the information. And because I was a teacher for so long, I know how to teach complex topics in a really like effective way. And also I know how to lay out material in a strategic order so that it actually maximizes your results. Anyway, it's a whole nother topic, but, um, so anyway, I was teaching, I would have a huge mug in the morning. And then at the time I was also waitressing. So after teaching, I would have another huge mug going to waitressing. So I had caffeine all the time, um, but I gave it up in 2014. I haven't had it since. And I have still not had it, even though I'm having barely any sleep, but I do want to talk to you about what I am doing to strategically support my energy. Um, because obviously I used to get a lot more sleep. I was someone that would get like eight hours of sleep a night. And obviously I, I recommend sleeping, right? This is not me saying like, hey, you could just skip sleep and do these things and your energy will be great. Like that is not what I'm saying. These are just extra things for you to do to support your energy. Because for me, the, my, the reality right now is sleep is just not an option. And maybe it's not an option for you right now either. That doesn't mean that like, oh, okay, so I'm just going to stay up really late and watch Netflix and get up really early and go to a boot camp class and just like skip sleep. So I don't have time for it. Like that's not what this is. This is if you have a newborn and you're not sleeping, if you have children, they're waking you up. If you work overnight, if you're shift work, like whatever it is, um, and you want to know how to support your energy without caffeine, this is what is going to help support you, or this is what has really helped me. And I'm hoping that it's going to help you as well. Okay. Um, so since it's not an option for me and I like sleep in general, and I don't want to rely on caffeine because for three reasons, number one, it's going to make me more tired eventually anyway, because when you have caffeine, whether that's pre-workout, whether that's coffee, whatever it is, it spikes your energy 
And then eventually whatever comes up must come down. So it's going to then tank your energy level. So it's not a stable amount of energy. It's like this up, down, up, down, up, down. That's why people go and reach for more cups of coffee throughout the day. I'm not interested in that. So that's the number one reason why I'm not relying on caffeine. Number two is it's not going to support my hormones. Obviously, rebalancing my hormones postpartum is extremely important to me. I really honestly feel very balanced out emotionally. Like I honestly feel so amazing. I know encapsulated my placenta was a huge part of that. I did an episode on that on Friday if you want to go back and listen to it. And all the work I did leading up to pregnancy, throughout pregnancy, like I've been working on my hormone health for literal years. So I know that having those tools that I was easily able to bounce right back into postpartum of just knowing how to support my body has helped so much. And having caffeine, I know is one thing that's not going to support my hormones because it's going to mess up my blood sugar. It's going to deplete me of nutrients, like all of these things. I also just did not do well with caffeine. It really like gave me jitters. And so that's the second reason I know it's not going to support my hormones and rebalancing after pregnancy is extremely important to me. So that's number two. And number three is my nervous system doesn't need any more stimulation than it's already getting. Okay. Having a stable nervous system is probably one of the best things you could do before you have a baby is learning how to regulate your nervous system because your nervous system is what's going to regulate them. If you're dysregulated, it's going to dysregulate them. So when they're freaking out, when they're crying and crying and there's nothing you could do about it because like they're screaming their head off in the car or you're changing them and they're screaming their head off and you have to change their diaper because there's poop everywhere or like whatever it is, if they're crying because they're so tired, like if your nervous system is not regulated, because you didn't put the work in to do that and you're feeling anxious and freaked out. Oh my God. Oh my God. They're going to feel that it's going to make it worse. So you being regulated during those like high emotion times is so freaking helpful. And there's so much stimulation that's going on every single day with you, when you have kids and you know, even if you don't, there's obviously so many other things that just can stimulate your nervous system. I don't need any more stimulation. I don't need something else to stimulate my nervous system and to dysregulate it in any way. So that's the third reason why I'm not interested in relying on caffeine for to help my energy. So that's just a little backstory. So here's what I do do. So do do. Here's what I am doing so I could still have stable energy throughout the day so I can actually enjoy my time with her. I'd like a little baby and enjoy my family and run my business and pack up because we're moving and do the, I'm not doing the physical renovations of our house. My husband is doing that. So we bought, if you're, if you don't know this, we recently sold our condo that we're in. We bought a new home. We're packing up to move our condo. We're doing renovations on our new house right now. My husband is there doing the renovations with my dad and like my family. My dad's been a carpenter for years. My uh, um, uncle's electrician, all that stuff. So super grateful for that. But Um, so I'm not doing the physical renovations, but obviously there's so much that goes into it, like with picking out light fixtures and doing designs of like all that thing. So all these things that I'm doing on a daily basis, I don't want to just like go through the motions. I want to enjoy it. And I need my energy to do that. So here's what I'm doing. Number one thing is hydration. Okay. By the way, these aren't like sexy things. These aren't like, Ooh, do this herb or do this cool, like cold shower or whatever that cold shower could help for sure. But these are things that I actually have the time to do. That's little Madison, if you're hearing her grunting. These are things I actually have time to do throughout my day and aren't extra. They're not adding to like my mental load. Um, So anyway, that's another backstory. Number one, hydration. Hydration, hydration, hydration. Our brain and our cells need water to function and have energy. This I'm also exclusively breastfeeding, like I said. So water is even more important. I get so freaking thirsty when I'm breastfeeding. So I'm drinking a ton of freaking water, but this also means having a lot of electrolytes. So my body can actually absorb the water because water flows where sodium goes, right? So we have to have some type of sodium, some type of electrolytes in our body so that our body can actually absorb the water that we are you know, taking in. So my favorite electrolytes are Harmless Harvest Coconut Water. I'm obsessed with that brand. It's literally like sticking a straw in a coconut. It's so freaking good. Um, LMNT, I love LMNT. I personally like the citrus flavor. It's really freaking good. And Ultima Replenisher. I don't have any codes or for you for those um, products as of right now. If I eventually do, I'll put them in the show notes. But as of right now, I don't have those. But those are the electrolytes I love. I have at least... Um, I have an LMNT every day. I have an ultimate replenisher scoop every day. And most days I have coconut water also. So I'm getting those electrolytes in. And that really helps with hydration, especially first thing in the morning, having the LMNT to rehydrate after the night of breastfeeding. Obviously I drink water throughout the night when I'm breastfeeding too, but um, to rehydrate after that, to rehydrate after just a night of not sleeping, I should say, but you know what I mean? Helps a lot having it first thing in the morning. So that's number one. Number two is taking all of my supplements every freaking day without fail. 
Sometimes I'll miss my afternoon ones. I'm not going to lie. There have been days where I have missed it. It's been very minimal, but um, that does happen if I'm like running around, I forget to take them with me. But taking my supplements every day without fail is extremely important. My probiotic, my prenatal, my omega-3, my vitamin D3, my magnesium, my choline, my iron, my vitamin C, ashwagandha, every single day. We need to fuel our mitochondria, which are the energy centers of our cells with nutrients and with minerals in optimal ranges, high, high doses so that we can experience energy because there has to be enough nutrients and minerals left over after your body has used them to just do the basic things to run your body and to keep you alive. If there is not any extra, it's not going to go towards your energy. So making sure you're having nutrients in optimal ranges is going to support your energy. So this is a non-freaking negotiable for me. Two of my favorite supplement brands I talk about all the time on the podcast is Gut Personal. They're a sponsor of the podcast. Definitely go check them out. I use their vitamin D3. I use their magnesium. I also use their healer sometimes. Um, their soother I've used in the past. I'm not using it right now. They have actually they have a new women's probiotic. So go check them out. I do have a code for you for them, though it's code Corinne. I'll put all that information in the show notes also. They're such a freaking amazing company. I'm obsessed. And then the other one that I'm obsessed with is Needed, and that's my prenatal company. I use my prenatal from there, my iron, my choline, my omega. I'm obsessed with Needed. I talk about them literally all the time because they are the absolute best prenatal on the market, hands freaking down. And you know I'm a stickler for my supplementation. I do not take things if they have fillers in it. I don't take things that don't have stuff in the right absorbable amounts, like all the things. So those are my two absolute favorite brands. I have a code for um, Needed as well, code Corinne for both Needed and Gut Personal. The links will be in the show notes if you're driving or whatever. Like, oh my God, I can't remember. Don't worry, you can always check in the show notes, okay? Um, I also have a supplement masterclass if you want to learn like when to take these supplements, how much to take of them, um, how to properly dose them throughout the day because the timing of them is really important. Why they're important in your body. Like I go into extreme detail and I do different protocols for different things for if you have PCOS, if you have endometriosis or a painful period, if you're trying to boost your fertility, if you're pregnant, there are different protocols for different things that are going on in your life. So if you're interested in learning more about that, you could check the show notes for my supplement masterclass on that as well. Okay, that's number two. Number three is having breakfast and eating every three to four hours. So skipping meals is one of the quickest freaking ways to dysregulate your blood sugar and zap your energy, okay? And ain't nobody got time for that, okay? I don't have time for that. So prepping breakfast the night before, or not, not every night because I do it in batches, is a non-freaking negotiable because- if I don't have breakfast prepped, it's not going to happen. And I'm skipping breakfast is just not an option for me um, from a hormonal standpoint, from an energy standpoint, from all of it. So making big, uh, so having, again, so I prep like protein overnight oats or smoothies the night before, and that's been extremely helpful for me. Um, making portions of dinner that like large portions of dinner that I could also have for leftovers for lunch has been really helpful. Having grab and go snacks. So there are things like Saqqara bars, IQ bars, um, Siggy plant-based yogurt, um, fruit and raw nuts, like things I could easily quickly grab if I'm because like I don't have time to always sit down and have a full lunch. Um, that's been really helpful to just make sure that I'm not skipping meals. Does it look like it used to look like like I would have a solid, beautiful meal every single day? Like, no, sometimes it looks like just taking the leftover quinoa out of the fridge, throwing some raw spinach on it, cutting up half an avocado, and that's literally my lunch. So I'm eating cold while I'm breastfeeding. It's not about being perfect in this season, it's about making sure that I am still fueling myself, that I'm not skipping my meals and I'm doing the best I can and still having a protein, fiber, fat at every single meal um, because that's really helpful for stabilizing your blood sugar and for creating solid energy. Um, if you don't, or if you haven't already downloaded this free training, I have a free training on creating hormone balanced meals like that are going into what I just talked about with protein, fiber, and healthy fat combination that supports your blood sugar and your energy levels. It's totally free. I'll put that in the show notes as well for you. But breakfast and eating every three to four hours is a non-negotiable for your energy because when you're skipping meals like that, it's messing up your blood sugar and your energy is going to just go way down. And we also need our body needs fuel. Our brain needs carbs to actually have energy. You're not going to have energy if you're not fueling yourself with nutrients. Okay. So that's number three. Number four is eating. Uh, oh, sorry. Wait, did I skip that? One, two, three. Okay, sorry, there's five. I've been saying six. There are five things, okay? Five things that we are doing. 
Number five is morning walk in the sunshine. I am so grateful it's summer right now because this makes this possible, but getting sunshine in the morning is amazing for supporting your hunger and satiating hormones, your ghrelin and leptin, which goes back to also supporting your blood sugar. And it also helps balance your circadian rhythm. So when you see sunshine in your eyes, it stimulates your cortisol levels and it, help, and it stops you from producing melatonin. Your melatonin is the hormone that you want stimulated at night. It helps you fall asleep and stay asleep. You know, obviously it's not going to keep you asleep if you need to get up, you know what I'm saying? Um, and cortisol, you know, cortisol is a stress hormone, but we also need cortisol. We want it to be higher in the morning to help us feel awake. You don't want it too high. You obviously want it in a balanced amount, but getting sunshine in the morning is so helpful for giving you energy for supporting your circadian rhythm, um, which is needed for both me and baby. Because like I said, Madison's circadian rhythm, like she has her days and nights mixed up a little bit sometimes. So I'm like, we are getting sunlight in the morning. So you are aware that it's daytime right now and that it's going to be nighttime soon or in 12 hours, you know, so that's really, really helpful. So getting a morning walk in is obviously helpful from an exercise standpoint as well, but it really helps your energy to see that sunlight. Even if it's not super sunny, just getting outside in nature and going for a walk really, really helps support my energy. So that is the fourth one. Um, and then the fifth one is, this is the last one. Sorry, I've been saying six. I don't know. I can't count. It's all good. We're moving on. Is not overdoing exercise. I could probably go on to a hundred things is really what it is, but we're sticking to five. Okay not overdoing exercise. And this is not the season for me to crush a hard workout, not only from an energy perspective of just not getting a lot of sleep, but also from healing my body after nine months of pregnancy and then pushing a baby out of my vagina unmedicated. Um, and then now breastfeeding for however many months, like this is not the season to push myself in a workout ever, 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 ever. I'm just really not a fan of that ever, but especially right now. So slow movements that repair my core and my pelvic floor. That's the vibe right now. That's what's helping my energy. That's what's helping my body recalibrate. So these are simple things that you can just think about. Like really ask yourself if you feel exhausted throughout the day, are you drinking enough water? Are you taking supplements in in uh, therapeutic ranges, meaning an optimal amount of nutrients are in these actual supplements. Because the ones, if you're getting them in just like a regular drugstore, like they're, it's honestly, I hate to say it, but it's like you're throwing your money down the drain because they're just not going to support you the way they actually need to. Are you actually eating enough? Are you eating enough at each meal? Are you eating more, enough frequently throughout the day, every three to four hours ish? Are you having breakfast within 90 minutes of waking up? Like, are you doing these things? Think about these things that we're talking about and see, oh, okay, I can actually improve on my hydration. Oh, I can actually improve with having my meals prepped so that can help support my energy. Or maybe for you, it's getting uh, some sunlight in the morning, maybe doing a walk in the morning, or maybe you're overdoing it with your workouts. Like these are things that I know are really supporting my energy. So take the time today to like, after this episode is done, really reflect on like, okay, which one of these five areas can I really work on right now to help support myself and my energy, especially if sleep is not an option, even if sleep is an option. And there's still things like you could get eight hours of sleep and still be tired throughout the day if you aren't doing certain things that are going to support your energy throughout the day. So I hope this was helpful for you. Um, I would love to know which one are you going to work on next? If you had any takeaways, if there are certain things you do to support your energy that I didn't list, like obviously there's things like cold showers and all of that, but like I'm talking about just the basic things that we could do day in and day out because these quote unquote basic things are the foundation of having balanced hormones of nourishing your body from the root level so that you can have energy and feel good and just all the things have clear skin, like every single thing. Okay. So I hope this was helpful for you as always. Thank you so much for being part of this community. I love when you message me and tell me that you're binging the podcast. Some of you are like, I just found it. I'm listening to every episode or some of your OGs. Like I love you regardless. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you for again, messaging me for sharing this on social media, for sharing with a friend. You're the reason this podcast is getting out there and I am just obsessed, obsessed, obsessed. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I'll talk to you soon.